Okay, I'm going to create an EC2 server. I'm going to use this for uh, Splunk monitoring. Um, go to EC2. Let's create a new instance. Call this uh, Splunk server. Use an Amazon Linux AMI, um, just a micro instance here. Uh, I will use a previous key pair that I have. Um, let's see here. I think I can leave the rest alone. And we'll configure this, the rest to be just like that. Yep. Launch the instance. instance. Here's the Splunk server. Okay, it looks like it's running. Okay, I am now going to install Splunk Enterprise Server. Um, normally, you go to their website and you're able to kind of fish this URL um, to be able to kind of grab this RPM file, but I'm going to just get the thing more directly right now. Uh, just use what I have. Um, download the file. See, here's the file. I'm going to perform the install. And I will uh, start the Splunk server. Going to root. Uh, go to the directory cd opt splunk bin. And then I will perform the start, uh, Splunk start, but then I'll accept the license automatically and then answer yes to everything. Now it will prompt you to enter an admin username. Uh, if you don't enter in a username, if you hit enter, it will just default to admin. Um, enter a password. Uh, I will just use password. Okay, and then this will start a web server on 8,000. Uh, let's see here, so if I go to this server, open up a browser, I can go to this public IP address and port 8,000. Oh, almost forgot. I will need to go and Adjust the firewall. We'll add an inbound rule. I will add port 8000 and save the rule. There we go. And be able to log into this uh, using that same password you just created.
Okay. The uh, one of the first things probably need to do is um, go over here to settings, server settings, general settings. And then change this pause indexing a free disk space to 50 since this uh, hard drive has a very small or this this instance has a small hard drive I save that okay and right now this is going to an IP address I'm going to try to change that right now where I have some sort of an domain name associated to this. So I'll go to the uh, AWS Management Console here, um, go to Route 53, go to Hosted Zones, select the uh, kimchimino.com URL, uh, let's see here, I create record, name the subdomain Splunk, put that IP address here. Uh, record type is A type and read record. So now I should have a Splunk URL. I'm going to use this URL here instead. Uh, leave it as port 80. Enter and I should be rerouted. Okay, I'm going to install a Splunk Universal Forwarder. I have two servers here. Uh, two instances. One is the kimchi web server and the other one is the Splunk server. I want information um, from the web server to go to the Splunk server. So I'm going to set up a, a universal forwarder for Splunk. Um, I will let's see here. I will go ahead and open up a Kali um, terminal. I will connect to the kimchi web server. So let me grab that IP address. Okay. And then I will get the universal forwarder. Um, this is the RPM file. Download it. And I will install the RPM file sudo yum install and then that rpm file um, then I will change over to the Splunk forwarder bin directory uh, but I will switch to root then go to the bin directory it's that cd opt Splunk forwarder bin and I will then start the forwarder. Start, I will accept the license and answer yes. Um, add an administrator username. I will go ahead and hit enter and then take the default, which is admin. Password, I'll just keep it simple here uh, for demo purposes and go password. And same thing for the uh, confirmation. So that is that, and it looks like it used the uh, management port of 1889. I will want to take and forward everything. Um, so I will forward to that actual server. Um, but here I will want to forward to this Splunk server and We'll want to use this public IP address here, 5482.123.72, and on port 9997. Here I'll add, I'll, I'll uh, use that admin username and password, password. Okay, so now I am forwarding to this other server, the Splunk server from this uh, web server. Um, I will set here a monitor and 
I will be looking at this var logs directory that's on this, this server here. And afterwards, we'll need to do a restart. So I will restart. Okay, it's restarted. So let me go and go into the Splunk server. Uh, grab this public address. I'm going to start up a new session. I'm going to remote into the Splunk server here. And then I'm going to change into the servers bin directory. And the sudo to get into that one. And then I will um, enable listening. Probably want to sudo there too. This server, um, the Splunk server, is listening from this other server, the, the, the web server, on port 997. Um, then I'll do a restart here as well. Okay, while that is restarting, I am going to go to the Splunk server and I will want to open up the firewall. So here I will edit inbound and add a rule to listen on 9997. So that way the forwarder can forward and get into the server with the data. Save rules. Okay, and now I will open up the uh, Splunk server here. Let's just refresh. Uh, password admin password. Enter. Okay, just ignore this. Okay, now. I need to go into the um, Splunk home and your server settings. Should be able to see. Let's see here, actually, maybe it's forward and receiving. Uh, configure receiving. Yeah, so here is the receiving port that I added. Um, I should be able to go now, just do like a search and reporting. Let's get the tour here. 
go to data summary. And here you can see that uh, this is coming from the, the, the forwarding server. So this is coming from the web server here. It's like that. And you can see the various data that, that's coming from the server, from that var log directory. Uh, here, see, var log. So here is the setup of um, the Splunk forwarder. Uh, going from the the one server, which is the Kimchi web server, going over to the Splunk server. 